They call me Swift. I'm here to talk to you about saving hackathons today. Uh, I imagine most of you probably have no idea who I am, so I'll start with that. Uh, I work as a developer evangelist in New York City for SendGrid, these guys. So for anybody who doesn't know what SendGrid is, we're uh, an API company. We make it really super easy for developers to send and receive email from their applications. Uh, in addition to being an evangelist for SendGrid, I'm also one of the founders of Hacker League, which is uh, the largest platform for hackathons in the world. So these days, we started a little over a year ago. We've run 140-something events on our platform since then. We also post a pretty impressive number of hacks and hackers, and we've become a, kind of a facilitating tool for hackathons all over the world. So, um, so in startup land, hackathons are the new hotness. Uh, and this is something that I'm personally really passionate about. Over the past three years, I've probably been to somewhere in the neighborhood of about 100 hackathons. Um, in various capacities. I started as a developer going to them, and then uh, I played the role of facilitator when I started Hacker League, and I've also organized them and evangelized at them as well. So I pretty much played every role you can imagine. Uh, and with the proliferation of, of APIs in the startup community, we've kind of seen uh, you know, everybody getting involved in this, this space. Uh, and it seems like you know, when I st first started out doing hackathons, we were lucky maybe to get one or two a month, and these days there have been weekends where there's been 15 in a weekend, you know? And so th that growing trend over the past couple of years is, is both exciting and, and interesting to me, and I'm gonna kind of use this presentation to look at uh, some of the things that have been going on with hackathons and, and where they're gonna go in the future. So obviously the number of events is on the rise, we just kind of talked about that. Um, we've seen a pretty steady, uh, exponential growth curve in the number of hackathons appearing uh, from both my experiences with Hacker League and SendGrid and the number of events we're getting involved in. Um, prizes are getting huge. When I first started doing this, we were lucky to see a $300 first prize. There are hackathons today that boast $50,000 in prizes or more, right? Like, that's absurd. You know, think about the return on investment for that as a hacker, right? You spend 24 hours at an event with that potential outcome of $50,000, that's even better than any job that I've ever had, you know? That's great. I can gladly take that. Uh, more people are showing up. So, you know, back in the day, 30 people would be a good event, you know, maybe a little bit more. I think the largest event that I went to when I first started out was maybe 100 people, and that was really exciting to see all those people to get together in a room and make something over the course of uh, a short period of time. And these days, there are, you know, student-run hackathons that boast it's 600 signups and four or 500 attendees from you know people traveling all over the world just to go to these events, which is insane. And like that's a common occurrence these days, so <laughs> that's cool. Evangelists, need I say more? My <laughs> my very existence and my job uh, is kind of a testament to how important these events are becoming in the the API and startup world. You know, it's, it's my full-time job to interact with developers and travel to different events and talk to people. Um, and I'm going to get a little bit more into the role of what actually evangelists should be doing uh, and are doing. But just the very existence of these people alone. And, and, you know, companies like SendGrid boast a team of five and growing, and Twilio has seven and growing as well. So, uh, you know, companies that have API as, as a business, it, it makes a lot of sense to have evangelists, and they... they put a lot of effort into hiring the best and brightest to do it. Uh, even big brands, the slow pokes, are getting involved in this, right? Like, we're seeing uh, people like AT&T and Walgreens and, and Food Network and Kraft Foods. Like, these are huge companies that are really slow to move. They're actually getting involved in hackathons and not only sponsoring and facilitating them, but throwing them themselves. You know, that's incredible that uh, even big brands are seeing the, the value of these events. Uh, so we all like hackathons. And these next two slides, I kind of wanted to skip in this presentation, but I think it's probably important to go over um, why we all like hackathons, right? So I'll start with, with startups, right? I mean, so there's a lot of reasons you could want to get involved in a hackathon, uh, especially if your API is your product, right? Number one, uh, you're going out, you get tons of brand exposure, right? So go to a hackathon, have some people Number one, you present to a large group of people. They hear about your, your API, what you can do, um, brand exposure. So you also get access to talent. Some of the best and brightest developers in the world are going to these events. You know, if you're a growing company, you need to hire engineers. It's like a fact of nature. 
customer signups. So you know, going to an event over 48 hours and, or 24 hours or whatever it is and you know, having people sign up and use your service right there, potentially if they build something, it could lead to you know, a growing customer who lasts for a very long time and produces a lot of revenue. API testers, if you're you know, just launching your API or if your API is your product, you get people who are using it and testing it in the field and you can get real feedback from customers. Uh, it's like user testing in real time, which is you know, amazing. Uh, and internal innovation, I've seen this one is like a growing trend among companies that they throw hackathons just for their internal engineers to you know, spawn innovation within their company and to like, help the, them feel like they're more involved in the decision making process. So these are all good things. And then hackers like hackathons, right? So, you know, networking, number one. You go out, you meet a lot of other people who are interested in the same things you are. You get to show off, you get fame. There's a lot of really notorious hackers in the field right now who, you know, have a history of producing really awesome stuff. Um, and, you know, that's awesome that somebody can, can make a name for themselves just doing these, these events. Win prizes. We obviously talked about how big the prizes are getting. Uh, and also the number of prizes at these events is, is increasing as well. You know, I've seen events where the n prize to attendee ratio was almost, you know, uh, two to, or one to two. So that means like every other person gets a prize when they go to one of these events. You know, if you walk away, with, go in for a weekend, walk away with a Nexus 7 or something like that. That's, you know, pretty cool. Um, learning. When I was first starting out, you know, hackathons were a great way for me to try new things. At work, you don't necessarily get the opportunity to uh, try new tools and things like that. So hackathons provide a good facility to actually do that. And Finally, they're fun, right? They were a lot of fun. That's probably the reason I kept coming back was, you know, I went into these events and it was awesome. There was a whole bunch of people in a room who cared about the same things and were building awesome stuff and showing it off. And it was all these really great things for, for everybody. And it wasn't just the hackers, it was the startups and the organizers. And we were all, it was like an ecosystem that uh, is a symbiotic relationship, so to speak, where everybody kind of fed off each other and created something awesome. So given all that goodness, Right, I want to ask a question. So now that we have all this money and interest, are hackathons actually getting any better? Right? Over the last two years, we've seen tons of events, tons of money, tons of interest, people, all these great things. Right? But fundamentally, I'm not sure that the events are any better off today than they were two or three years ago. And that's kind of a startling fact for me, because you think that you know, by having all these good factors coming into it, that it would be really obvious, uh, and you would see these tangible, obvious benefits everywhere. But I'm not quite sure, and we're going to explore that. So uh, there's a growing concern, consensus that hackathons are going downhill, and this is not just from any one side of the coin. And I'm not talking just from the role of evangelists. I'm not talking just from the role of hackers or organizers or startups in general. And uh, the next couple slides are quotes from. Paraphrased quotes from people that I tend to hear pretty regularly when I go to these events. So let's start with startups, right? Well, we're not really reaching the hackers the way we used to. And maybe that can mean a number of things, right? Like brand exposure and loyalty, or maybe you go to one of these events and nobody builds anything on your API, and you're like really disappointed that you just dumped all this time and energy and effort into something, and you got nothing back, but all these people around you are getting awesome stuff, right? So what's up with that? And organizers, you know, we're not seeing the same returns we used to. Hack and Why is, is a great hackathon that happens in, in New York City every year. It's, it's students only. Uh, it brings in students from all over the, the United States. Um, and, you know, the first, I think there are probably at six events now, maybe five. I'm not quite sure. But, um, you know, each year the number of people who attended keeps going up and up. And, and this past time around, there was actually a, it wasn't a low number of attendees, but it was surprisingly less than what you would expect for the, the trend that that event has had. And this is, you know, goes beyond that. It's a ton of events, right? There are events where they're expecting attendance of, of hundreds of people and only 15 or 20 show up. And now they have all this food and prizes and people who showed up and put their time and energy into it. And, you know, there's not people to share it with. Developers. This is one of the most disappointing quotes I, I've heard, but you know, it's like I'm getting burned out on hackathons. And I mentor a lot of student groups in particular, um, and this is kind of a common thing to hear. And actually, I've actually heard this quote from uh, my two co-founders at, at Hacker League, right? And that's really disappointing, right? This is, our startup is based around this idea that we love hackathons and we want to see them continue to grow. And, and people are starting to say, I'm, I'm burned out. So 
something's kind of wrong when you start to hear that. Um, and the problem is if we don't do something about this, that developers are going to stop coming. And the evidence for this is developers tend to be innovators. So they go where there's opportunity and they use it, right? And like they're very early adopters. But when things tend to get saturated and the opportunity starts to dry up, they tend to leave and go find other opportunities. And I think that if we don't do something about this trend and make sure that these events actually provide the same amount of, of uh, resources and tools to these people who are attending, and not only developers, but also the organizers and the startups, um, you know, people are going to stop showing up, and we're going to stop seeing these events happening. And a lot of good comes out of them. And so that would be a huge disaster in my book. And so how do we kind of address this, and why is it happening? And I think it's because we, somewhere along the lines, we took on a mindset that wasn't necessarily aligned with the mindset of a lot of people who, the developers essentially, who, or the hackers who show up. Uh, you know, when I say uh, hackers, I, I'm not just talking about coders, I'm also talking about designers and the business people and, and all these innovators that are involved in this space as attendees. Um, you know, we need to start thinking like them. And so this is particularly geared at developers, this slide, but it could easily be switched up to talk about designers or product people, but you spend your nine to five, Monday to Friday, doing this, right? Why would they want to code on their weekend too? Like, why do I want to take another 48 hours to do what I do at work every day of the week? And if you can figure out a good answer to this question, I think you probably have figured out what drives people to go to hackathons. I think it's because hackers are artists. And this is my, my big, bold thesis in this entire presentation. This is something that I've been kind of playing with for the past couple years. You know, we look at, at code and, and startups and these things as something that's it's business, right? It's not uh, something that we would classify as art like a painting or music or something like that. But in the sense of hackathons, I really do believe that this is art, right? And I've got some evidence here, but this quote, uh, I think, is probably a good place to start. It's, it's from a guy named uh, Leo Tolstoy who wrote War and Peace. So he knew a thing or two about art, believe it or not. But it says, and it is on the capacity of man to receive another man's expression of feelings and to experience those feelings himself that the activity of art is based. So what he's getting at is that you can look at a piece of art and what makes it art is the fact that you feel what that person felt when they made it or some kind of emotional response is, is it elicited from you. And the thing is, great hacks make us feel what the hacker felt. You know, there's a need and they're addressing it and they're using our APIs to kind of fill that gap. And when we look at these hacks and we see what they did and how they solved that problem, that's art. You know, fundamentally, from that, that quote that I just read you, that's the essence of art, and that's what they're doing. And so I think we need to stop looking uh, as hacks as business and stop looking at hackathons as a place where we can you know, go to get customers and, and increase revenues and things like that. We need to start appreciating it for the artistic value that it has. Um, and the thing is, you've got to remember that art and business are motivated by different things. You take a great artist, right, like a Da Vinci, and you say, here's a hundred million dollars. Go make another Mona Lisa, right? Is that money really going to motivate him to do it? And I think that you're going to find the same thing with hackers. Like these prizes and you know, all this extra interest and in events, yeah, it's getting people to come out and it's getting people to them and in the door, but is it really producing any more innovative hacks? Is an event that costs $100,000 to put on any better than one that costs $5,000 to put on? Is the fact that you brought in hackers from all over the world any better than the, you just found local students and got them together in a room, bought them pizza, and told them to make some cool stuff, right? I think we really need to, to focus on this to, to solve our problems. Uh, and so. The, these next couple of slides are going to address you know, my opinions of, of how to solve the problem. And I think that SendGrid and Hacker League are doing a really good job at addressing some of these. And I'll kind of illustrate what we're doing um, you know, to help get there. So the first person I want to talk to is me, evangelists. So you know, evangelists, typically, a lot of them, I've found that they think that their job stops after the API presentation. But I really think there's a lot more to it than that. 
as an evangelist, and not necessarily only like an evangelist in terms of like your job, but if you're like an evangelist in the sense of you love a product and you want to go out and show somebody, your job is to inspire them, to show them what they could potentially build. The reason that Twilio and SendGrid have been so successful with their, these getting involved in hackathons is that we go there and the buck doesn't stop after we show off the API. We go in and we actually sit down with hackers and we show them the potential of what they could make with our products. And I think that's really what drives innovation and, and builds brand loyalty. You're building a connection with hackers that's beyond just your API. You're building a connection with them as people, as individuals, and not as you know, cattle and, and whatever drones that produce revenue for your business. Right? So it's about building that personal relationship. Startups. Ask not what the hackers can do for you, but what you can do for the hackers. And this kind of comes back to you know, what evangelists are doing. Is the thing is, yeah, your, your API solves a business need, right? And like, but the beauty is that if your API doesn't actually solve any problems, then nobody's going to use it. So it's not about you going out and saying, hey, my API does this. You, know, you should use it. It's more like you go out and you ask the hackers, what problems do you have? And how can I get there to help you actually solve them? And that's something that is going to help us uh, spawn innovation. And I think that SendGrid does a really great job in this in particular. Um, you know, we sponsor events that are not necessarily just about writing code with our APIs, but they're more about getting developers out and talking and thinking, right? And these events that you know, may not actually have anything to do with developing. And I think that getting people out and, and imagining what it is that they can use your or finding problems and identifying how your, your startup can, like, really fit in, or how your APIs can really fit in and help solve those is, you know, absolutely uh, something special. And so organizers, this is kind of the last group of people who tend to take a little bit of the, the blame here, but uh, make sure you're throwing hackathons for the right reasons. Uh, when we first started doing these, I think that um, the main focus was on giving people a venue to get together and build cool stuff. And then somewhere along the way, we lost focus on what that was. Um, and I don't necessarily think that any one person or a group of people is particularly to blame for that. But I think that making sure that you focus on the innovation and providing that value to the people who are attending is going to help make better events. And the other thing is, is you should celebrate the innovation and community that, that gets built and happens there. Um, you know. I would love to see an event where they rewarded hackers for embracing the hacker spirit, for uh, going out and helping other teams, for sharing ideas and, and things like that, right? Like that would be awesome to me rather than seeing you know, these events where they're rewarding business value or, or whatever. And I think that it's going to build better uh, events and community and keep people coming back and keep the ecosystem in balance if we do that. And so I kind of want to close this with a quote from this guy, Isaacs. And if you don't know who Isaacs is, he's uh, basically the head of, of the Node.js development community. And so if you don't know anything about Node, the only thing you really need to know is that there's a ton of developers involved in this. And this is like an ecosystem that represents probably the perfect distributed network of, of leadership and influence. And it's very democratic in a sense. And he says, fun cannot be forced. People work better when they're having fun. So this means that you have to let them work on things that they care about, help them find good things to work on, and mostly stay out of their way. And I think that if you can embrace this single bit of the essence of this quote, that you'll probably end up with better returns on all those goals that we outlined originally. You know, um, one of the things that the trends that I've been seeing recently, uh, you know, specifically with, with Hacker League, is that a lot of companies are coming to us and saying, hey, we want to throw internal hackathons which I think is great. That's awesome. It's a great way to spawn innovation around your product and keep your engineers happy and, and all these things. I think the key to throwing a good internal hackathon actually has a lot of the same bits as the key to throwing a good public hackathon. And that's you know, focus on letting people have access to the fun parts and just kind of stay out of their way, but make sure you're giving them the tools they need to succeed. So they call me Swift. I'm Swift Alpha One on Twitter. Uh, you know, if you have questions, if you agree with me, disagree, I'd love to hear about it. That's uh, kind of the end of my presentation. So I'm not sure how I'm doing on time. I may be over or under or whatever. But uh, if anybody has questions, I'd love to take them. So uh, I'm with you on that. We just organized the Angel Hack in Paris this weekend. Mm -hmm. Had a couple hundred people coming. And out of them, I'd say at least one third did not care about the prizes. They just came because they wanted to build some cool stuff. 
or they want to try new technology and you know whatever. But the rest actually came because we sent them to San Francisco, gave them tickets to the web, and all these things, and that just broke the site. My point is that I see a lot of things happening with hacking that's very similar to what happened in many sports. Like poker is a good example. It started like a, as a game. You know, then people start playing at home for fun, right? Then people start taking like the more artistic route to it, and it ended up being a sport with people sponsoring players. And I see exactly the same thing happening with hacking. You still have, you know, fun hacks, and you have, you know, big leagues. And you know, I guess it's just a matter of time before we have a World Series of hacking with a million dollars, right? <laughs> yeah. And everyone participates because it's a million dollars. Right. Well, like I said, I think that having those prizes and giving them those opportunities to like go to the valley and things like that, that's probably going to get a lot of people out. I would ask myself, am I getting, are, are, are these people who are coming producing you know, any better or worse value than the people who are coming just to have fun? And I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, and I don't really think it matters in particular. I think that it's more uh, a guideline for, um, you know, thinking about how you want to run your event and how you want to facilitate things. Uh, and, you know, each event has its purpose in place, right? And so... Yeah, so that was my point. So don't think for events that could come exist. Yeah, the two can exist. The thing is, uh, I think I'm more talking about from the side of, like, the people who are disappointed and seeing things decline and w just illustrating why that actually is happening and what they can do about it to, like, create events that would go back to the spirit of the original. Um, an interesting kind of corollary about the whole World Series of, of hacking and things like that is uh, I've seen a couple of different, you know, startups actually try to do that, and there's, it's going to come. It, it will be here. Uh, and actually, one of the original goals of Hacker League was to kind of unify the, the community in terms of, like, these are the things I built, and this is, like, my profile for hacking and things like that. Um, and, you know, we're getting there. There are people who put their Hacker League profile on their resume these days, which is, you know, incredible to me. I'd, like, seeing that for the first time was, like, Oh my God! Like I provided value to these people that was beyond just you know something fun over a weekend, um, but yeah, it's coming. It'll be here. And like I said, I think that you know there's just like pickup games are different from a World Series. You know, hackathons are going to have different capacities and reasons behind them. But um, like I said, I was more addressing the fact that if you are disappointed, like some people in the community, that these are the ways to fix it and go back to it. So the question is, do, is stability a factor in like the success of a, or sustainability a factor in, in the success of a, a hack, right? Or okay, so uh, kind of one of the original motivations for Hacker League as well was that hacks have this uh, essence about them of, you know, you spend 24 hours working on something awesome, you show it off for five minutes at the end of the event. And then what happens to it the next day? And like most of the time, it actually disappears because either your local server stops running, you run out of SendGrid or Twilio credits or whatever, right? Um, and so we gave people a way to preserve it without actually having to put any code on the website. Um, and so sustainability, I think, if you want to talk about like hacks, most people who go out and go to these events, or I won't say most, a lot of people who go out to these events actually have full-time jobs already. And they don't necessarily want to go out and start a startup, but they're building something for it being fun. So I don't think sustainability would be a main goal for them. There's other people who go to these events with the goal of actually starting a startup, which is great. And you know, there's a lot of really awesome you know, case studies about that um, you know, out there. And I think that it really depends on the goal of the individual. And you as an organizer, it's not your responsibility to enforce that on any one person because I think you're going to end up disappointing a lot of people if you do. And I, events that have a stipulation of you need to go out and turn this into a startup after this event, like, you know, who are you to say what these people should be doing? It's your job to, you know, give them tools and resources to like succeed and make awesome stuff, not to like tell them what to do. You're not the boss, you're just helping them. <laughs> 